started making them, I I was like, this isn't what I do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Aside from I have been leading up to this, experimenting a lot with really thick paint and yeah. working with really thick paint. So that wasn't such a departure, but writing words on the pieces did feel like a big departure and it felt super I feel really vulnerable doing that it's all personal but it's not personal it's all <laughs> <laughs> it's it is it is based on writings and um poetry and philosophy and um music and things that I looked into to, to think about love I was feeling like a lot of the work that I was seeing put out there was directly related to what's going on in the world. And this is definitely related to what's going on in the world, but I wanted to make it less direct and warm, I guess. Yeah. I think it was, I think when I first saw these, I absolutely like felt like it, it filled some, a void that was there, you know, like, you know, it has like the very painterly um, qualities that I really like in, 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 you know, in artwork sometimes. And then, but just like the, just the sentiment was very like, felt like very, um, yeah, like a good antidote. Yeah. It makes me really happy to think of artwork as accessible. I don't think it always has to be complicated and deep and well, I guess it can be both things at once. Like it's always, it's always a happy feeling when more than one thing is true at the same time. But yeah, I yeah. do like that. It's like recognizable, I guess. Honestly, a part of it too is like, I can't tell if I like, like, you know, it was almost like, I don't know if I like these or not, but then it was like, oh, I really do. Why, why was I so concerned? Like, why was I like, I'm not <laughs> sure, you know? And so yeah. it's interesting when you have work that does that, you know, you're like, you're- it you, Like you're drawn to it because you understand it yeah. and you, it's easy to connect with, but then you're kind of mad at it because it's easy to connect with. Like you were saying, it's not really that different, but it's different enough from your other work where I think I've told people that know you and they're like, oh, you know, like they hadn't seen them yet. So it's kind of like, and I think that's always kind of interesting when an artist kind of, you know, takes a, like a little bit of a turn and you kind of go in a different direction. I think that's, I think that's good to do, you know, like to push I think it's good. I think it's good to do too. I was just reading an article about, um, resilience and how learning new things keeps us um, available to sort of recover from hard things. And I think that's true as artists, we should always be experimenting and trying new things and not be stuck in our, I mean, I could make squares for the next 20 years and be totally happy, yeah. but, but every now and then it is important to kind of deviate and be curious about what else is in me and what else I can reflect on around me, I guess. Well, I'm just gonna be really honest with you in a practical way, during those months, it was really hard to get white paint. Oh yeah. And I used a lot of white paint and it was really expensive. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. I mean, so, like just that alone, I felt like whenever I, whenever I was able to get it and it was delivered to me, I felt like I had won the lottery, the white paint lottery. <laughs> and um, so the larger, the larger paintings and that the paint is thick, I used a lot of paint. I was, I was, I almost applied the paint reluctantly. Like, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get more paint, you know, and so, but I just, and then I was just like, just go for it, just go for it. So the scale I, in a practical way was scary for me. Yeah. <laughs> I kind of liked working with the smaller ones, but I didn't, I don't know, I don't really think about, I don't really think about it that deeply. It's really what, just what materials are available to me. What size canvas do I have? 
all of it, all of making these was a mess because the oil sticks would just like get thick white paint on them. And then I would use, the, I was, the paint was so precious. I would use that, those big splooges of paint to make, to put on other paintings. And then I used a lot of ink pens because all of the letters I used, I used an actual ink pen to write okay. into the paint, but that it doesn't really clean up very well. Yeah. Kind of, yeah. You lose that pen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think I started with Sharpies and that became too expensive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The letter, the love letter to blue that these sprung off of, which was, I mean, I, I'll just say it, it was a riff off of that Joan Snyder work because I was studying um, abstract artists and I was um, recreating their works in blue to study blue simultaneously. So I would read about, I would read about an artist and I started with a list of a hundred and I would read about the artists, I would look at their work, and then I would go into my studio with a picture of their work and I literally would copy it. And then after about five paintings, that got really, really old. And so I removed myself from, I, I tried to be once removed from it. So I would study the artists, look at their work, take a couple days and then go into my studio and, and sort of recreate how I felt like their work looked instead of doing it exactly. So that, that was that was something, a project that I did for school. And the Love Letter to Blue was the final one in that project. I mean, I think it's really important to be aware of the great painters who came before us. It's yeah. like it's it's like the same, I mean, just the same lessons in history, right? You you need to know. You need to know where the where the ideas are coming from. When you were working on your on the MFA, you did a lot of like big paintings. It seemed like you were just kind of pushing a lot of things during that process. Yeah, that program really encouraged me to do a lot of different things, and I met a lot of really cool people there. I took advantage of the time and the space that I had. It was, I'm really lucky that I got to do that. And I, I, I really developed a love for working larger scale. I think that that brings a whole new life to paintings when you, when you see something that's like in, in your gallery, when you see the bigger one, it's just like, oh, like <laughs> that's big. Yeah, it definitely takes up the space. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's a little, I think it's a little funny. Like, I don't know if, are you familiar with Cloudy with the Chance of Meatballs, that children's book? Right. Where it <laughs> just yeah. made me think of that. Like, it's just like a giant meatball falling from the sky or something. Here's this giant piece of paper. It's just kind yeah. of silly. I had a, a professor who said this thing that I really um, stuck with me. It was like, there's three zones. It's like the safe zone, the exploration zone, and then the danger zone. Uh -huh. Kind of like, okay, that I don't know what I'm doing over there. But it's good to be like in that exploring zone, I think. And like you find things sometimes, and then you can tell if it makes sense, you know. Yeah, just staying curious. You're making a it feels like a big decision to have text have words you know mm -hmm. with the painting but then again it's like I think the thing that's nice is that like I think with all of your work it's like and I love that I love people that can not get too like worried about that like oh where does this fit in with what I've done in the past which I think mm -hmm. is something we all struggle with you know and it's like I'm just gonna do this and if it works it works if it yeah. doesn't then it's like I haven't really lost anything I've just tried something you know right. Right. Yeah, there's certainly been things that I've tried that actually every almost everything that I've ever tried <laughs> <laughs> doesn't work. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. <laughs>